What's up everyone? My name is Marie. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another speed build. So for today's video, I am finally back with a single unit home. So this is not multiple units or multiple houses on one lot. This is one family home. It just ended up being really big. Um, I said I would do one of these like regular homes again soon and um, it took me a little bit longer than I thought it would but I'm back with a family home it's the it's just that this one is really really big so um, I think you should either grab a snack or like watch this video in multiple sittings because it just is very long it is a victorian home in the world of strangerville and i'm very happy with how it came together in the end but it was a struggle i built this one over on twitch uh, for the most part i did a little bit of decorating by myself but then um the building for the most part and also the decorating for the most part we uh, i did that over on stream over on twitch so thankfully i had help but yeah it was especially the show like the overall shape of the house and then the roofing was a struggle it was a challenge but I had a lot of fun with it um, it's just that Victorian houses are not what I'm best at I feel like or at least it's what I struggle with the most I want to say um, it's just not something I gravitate towards very often or very quickly and it's just not something that is very familiar to me in real life because we don't really have a lot of these types of houses here. I live in the Netherlands if you didn't know that and I'm sure there's houses like this around but I've never really actually seen them so I don't know where that would be. So to me I'm not very familiar with them. I have built my fair share of Victorian houses in The Sims of course. I love um, just exploring styles that aren't necessarily familiar to me in The Sims, trying to make it work, trying to see what I can come up with. And so I've done it before, but it's not something I do a lot. And um, yeah, I was just feeling very inspired to uh, kind of revisit this style of build. I was working off of a reference picture for the facade of the house, but it ended up looking nothing like that one. Uh, it was just a nice like little picture to get me started on a build, but I actually really did not stay true to that picture in the end because the way The Sims works with like size proportions and um, wall height, like that type of a thing, it makes it very difficult to like recreate something like copy it just one on one. I've done it before for some things it really works, but for a lot of things it also just doesn't work. Um, but it was a nice thing to have like a picture to get me started. I found it on Pinterest and then um, I just kind of took over from there. And as you can see, I was struggling. One thing I really wanted to do for this house was create beautiful porches because that's what you see for a lot of those really beautiful fairy tale like Victorian houses. There are a lot of like beautiful porches, a lot of wraparound porches so that is something that I really wanted to try and achieve as well and I think I succeeded in the end. I also had a nice little tower at the front of the build for a little bit there which I actually thought looked good but with the roofing and um, with the porch and everything it just wasn't really working out for me in the end so I decided to get rid of the little tower at the front of the house but we do have a three-story tower on the uh, basically on the right side of the house which actually turned out so cool I was struggling with it because I am just not great at building towers using those like octagonal shapes and things and also those octagonal like roofs and things like that. I just, I don't know why, but I always struggle making it look good. And then I look at other people's builds and they use like, they create little towers and they use octagonal roof pieces and it looks great. I love how it looks. But for some reason, I guess we're just always our own worst critic. But whenever I do it, I just like overthink it and I stare at it too much and I get lost in how much I dislike it. Because looking back at the footage now, I'm actually this, I'm actually like this tower looks all right. I ended up fixing it in the end. Uh, I did a little bit of work on that tower and also just on the house in general off camera because this video would be two hours long if I didn't cut out anything. Um, so I definitely did do some work off camera, but I actually managed to fix the tower in the end with the roofing. I used a lot of beautiful windows with like shutters and I made it blend in well 
I feel like in the end, but I guess now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like that's the struggle that I have is making those either rounded walls or octagonal pieces like blend in with the rest of the build and also like blend, have the roofs like blend together, you know, it's just a struggle. And uh, so all in all, this build was definitely a little bit of a challenge, but in the end, I'm really happy with how it came together. I am building this in the world of a Strangerville, which is uh, a lot of fun. I actually love the vibes of this world. It is very pretty. Also something that is just not familiar to me in real life at all, which I feel like that's why it's so much fun to me because it's just, a different world entirely than what I'm used to, like this whole desert type vibe. And I really love it. Always the, the lighting in Strangerville is always really, really good, in my opinion, um, for most of the lots, especially when you have seasons and you activate a heat wave. That's just such beautiful, like pretty warm and soft like lighting and I just really enjoy it. So yeah, I, I also just really enjoy this lot. It's a little silly how you have like this driveway like or this pathway going up to the lot essentially. And then there's the lot there and it kind of like connects in a weird way. I'm glad that they actually made the terrain paint um, match up with the edge of the lot so you can kind of blend it in seamlessly. It's not ever going to be completely seamless because we don't really have that terrain paint, like that exact terrain paint that they used in the world to match it up perfectly, but we can like come very close to that kind of color and texture. So uh, that's what I did also. I had a lot of fun with like pathways and things. Um, so that was a lot of fun for this build as well. And the house just ended up being really, really big. So in the end, this house has Oh gosh, I need to count. I think it has five bedrooms total. It has one bedroom downstairs and then four bedrooms upstairs. Yeah, so five bedrooms total and also five bathrooms, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, a couple of the rooms have en suites and then we also have a few hall bathrooms. Uh, so five bedrooms, five bathrooms, and it's just very spacious. One thing I try to do for the interior for this house, you'll see that um, once we move on to the interior, for now I'm still like messing around with the porches and the spandrels and the columns and the um, little staircases and, and stuff like that uh, to really get in those little details. I was having so much fun with the spandrels, by the way. The uh, Strangerville pack comes with really, really beautiful build items. If you don't have that pack because maybe it seems a little off or like a little odd to you, I know not a lot of people or at least not everybody likes the like gameplay playthrough of Strangerville, which I understand it's kind of like a one time thing. It's like a storyline that you kind of play through. I feel like if you've done it once, then you've just done it and it's just kind of done. But uh, I feel like the Strangerville pack just comes with really pretty built by items, especially also some really pretty like decoration, like decor stuff, furniture. But for the most part, I really like these fences that I'm using. These fences, spandrels and columns are all from Strangerville and I think they're really beautiful. It also comes with really pretty doors and windows that work especially very well on Victorian houses because that is basically the style of build that this pack essentially came with. Um, so they have a lot of build items that match the Victorian style. So I was really uh, going through and um, just using all the things that came with Strangerville. Uh, it was nice to revisit all of that. But yes, as I was saying, for the interior, I really tried to make it all very family oriented and like cozy and like family friendly, I guess you could call it. But I also wanted to make it very moody and dark. So the interior, I use a lot of black or like dark gray kind of blackish wallpaper for a lot of the areas downstairs. Um, and then I obviously try to like brighten it up with like colors and some lighter swatches of things as well. But I, for the overall vibe, just tried to go for a pretty moody style. And that was a lot of fun for me to like make it dark and moody, but also cozy and like you can tell that there's a family living in the house if that makes sense and because this house is so big i was imagining a multi-generation family if that makes sense so it was a lot of fun actually because as we were decorating this house uh, we kind of came up with a storyline live on twitch because I hadn't really thought about it yet. I was super busy just designing the house, if you will. And also the floor plan, by the way, I cut over that because I did that off camera. 
um, or I skipped over that, I should say. But uh, it took me a long time, but it actually uh, ended up working out in the end, thankfully. But of course, always at the end of the speed build, I will jump into the game in real time and I'll give you a tour so you can get a better sense of the floor plan because as because you haven't really seen it like come together. So uh, I, I feel like it might be a little bit confusing. But yes, of course, I'll do that at the end of the video. Um, but yeah, the house itself just ended up being very spacious. We have a beautiful large hallway and then a living room space and then a closed off kitchen because I was imagining this as like a very old house that's been like kind of renovated over time, I guess, but maybe not really like it's just very old. Also for the interior, you'll see that I use a mix and match of like different furniture items because there's obviously a lot of heirlooms probably. Also just a lot of old items in general, but then also some newly added items over time, you know, that sort of a thing. So uh, it's very, it's basically some mix and match of different styles, different items, and it's not always super matchy matchy, which I feel like also makes it very realistic um, for a family home with a lot of people in it. Uh, so for this family, for the storyline, I came up with it on Twitch, like I said, with chat. And um, we were imagining, oh gosh, I hope that I'm remembering this correctly, but we were, we were thinking grandma. Grandma lives here. Grandma has the bedroom downstairs, which is actually a very bougie bedroom. Um, she has her ensuite and it's just a very nice large bedroom with a door leading onto a back porch, like onto a patio. It's really nice and it's really big. And uh, grandma has a fancy bedroom. Then we have two parents. We have a teenager, two children, and an infant. So that's seven Sims and then a cat. So that's a household of eight beings, essentially, because the cat obviously also counts. So it's a family of seven Sims and a cat. Um, and it's a, it's a full house, you know, it's, it's a full house. Um, but because the bedrooms are so spacious, I really wanted to do one shared kid's bedroom because the kid's bedroom, like I couldn't justify it not being shared because it's so big. I could have easily, if I had like fiddled around with a floor plan for a little bit longer, I could have made it like a, I don't know, like a six or maybe even a seven bedroom house if I wanted to, but then the bedrooms would be smaller. And I actually liked the idea of bigger, more spacious bedrooms, because for one, that is not something I've been doing a lot lately. And also I feel like it kind of matches the grand aesthetic of the house to have like beautiful, spacious, large bedrooms. Um, so that was a nice challenge for me to still make those rooms cozy. I also built this entire house on the uh, medium wall height, which isn't something I ever do. I, I don't know what it is, but like the medium, especially the tall wall height intimidates me, but the medium wall height kind of does that too. But for this house, it just made sense because it's so grand and just big in general that it made sense to build it on the medium wall height. So that's what I did. But yeah, as you can see, we are getting started on the landscaping now. I really had so much fun with these pathways and like just the terrain paint in general for this house. I don't know what it was about that, but I just really enjoy doing terrain paint, especially if it works out. It doesn't always work out and then it's frustrating, but if it does work out, it is so, nice to like watch it come together and it's so satisfying. I actually, we do have this annoying glitch in the game where the game will sometimes delete your um, terrain paint. If you like load, if you just like close out of the game and then open the game a few days later or like an hour later, it, sometimes it gets rid of your terrain paint, which is a terrible glitch. And I'm still holding out hope that they'll fix that at some point, but who knows. Um, so I was actually smart about it this time and I remember to save the lot to my gallery with the, um, with the terrain paint done so that if I like load it into my game and it turned out that I lost it, I would still have it on my gallery, which would be great. But I thankfully never lost it this time. Um, the glitch did not happen to me, which actually is great. It's, it's been doing that a lot lately, but not for this build. So that was actually really, really nice. Um, but yes, we are working on the landscaping. I did not 
like record every single little plant that I placed because it's a pretty spacious lot. Even though the house takes up most of the space on this lot, I didn't really have a lot of space for like a backyard. I have some space on the side here, as you can see. So we have more of like a side yard, but I guess we have some little areas to sit down and hang out outside, basically around the house. Um, like on all sides, but not necessarily a lot of space in the back, more so on the side of the house. But yeah, I place a lot of plants. I use a lot of debug plants, of course, because it's free. Not that it matters. I think this house comes in over 200,000 simoleons. I actually checked it out in the game already, or I just saw it when I uploaded it to the gallery. Um, it's over 200,000 simoleons. So it actually turned out to be very, very expensive. Um, so yeah, you might want to cheat if you want to use this house in your game, or maybe you just have a very rich family, which can happen. We actually did win the lottery, uh, in my game the other day. I was playing the Not So Berry Challenge and my Sim won the lottery. That's literally only ever happened to me once years ago. Um, where my sim, I think that was back when I played, it was before I even streamed on Twitch, but I was trying to do a 100 baby challenge by myself and I was having a lot of fun with it. I think I was on like baby number 25 or something like that. So I was, uh, I was doing pretty good there. And then the mom won the lottery and I hated it because part of the whole challenge for me was to just sit there and do the baby challenge and also struggle for money and try to get rich like over time. But then she won the lottery. So that was unfortunate, unfortunate um, in that instance. But yeah, uh, it happened to me the other day or like a couple of weeks ago in the not so berry challenge as well. So maybe you have a Sim that has won the lottery and then you can purchase this home no problem because a million simoleons is a lot of money. I had my Sim invested in like a really big apartment complex or like apartment building in San Sequoia to like rent it out to tenants, but I can't get rid of the money. We have so much money, which is actually not a problem for that challenge is actually kind of nice. Um, but still, yeah, this house is very expensive. But as you can see, we are now finally moving on to the interior of the build. Starting out with the hallway, we have a pretty grand hallway here that I tried to, um, you know, decorate and clutter up, but not go overboard with clutter. I feel like I've been saying that for my past, I don't know how many videos, I've been trying to tone it down with the clutter a little bit. I did not really succeed for this build. I was having so much fun. You can probably also tell, you know, by the length of the video, it took me 6 million years to decorate this house. And it's partially because of the clutter that I placed. I just have so much fun with it. And because we were coming up with such a nice, like a fun little storyline for this family that I could really just see these Sims in my brain. And um, it was so much fun to just like clutter up the spaces for them and make them very personalized. So that's what I did. I actually, by the way, used quite a lot of vampire stuff. Actually, not that much, but I used the wallpaper from vampires and I used that throughout the entire house. Um, so you can see here in the living room, this is what I was talking about earlier, like the moody color scheme. I used this black wallpaper with a pattern in the living room and in the hallways. Um, and I used the same wallpaper throughout all the rooms because this wallpaper from Vampires comes in a lot of swatches, also a lot of beautiful colors. So for the bedrooms, like for the kids and the teenager and also the infant, um, I obviously wanted to go a little bit more colorful for their bedrooms and also for the parents' room, actually. That one is, uh, has a green wallpaper, so that's also quite colorful. So I just really wanted to, you know, continue this wallpaper and have that sense of continuity where it's just that same wallpaper with the same like little like little trims on um, the bottom and at the top, if that makes any sense. Uh, so it was just like nice and continuous that way, I guess. I'm not sure if that's how you can say that, but I'm sure you know what I mean. So that's what I did. And I also went for black curtains here, which was a lot of fun. I, I felt like it was a little scary to me because it was so dark and almost a little bit goth that I was 
unsure if I was gonna make it look good for a cozy family, but it actually ended up um, looking pretty inviting and just cozy and it's also due to the clutter i think but yeah more about the family uh i keep trying to talk about the family storyline and then i keep getting distracted so i'm so sorry about that but yeah it's a multi-generation family so we have grandma in her bougie bedroom she's collecting flowers from all of her various dates that she goes on she goes on multiple dates a week um, that's kind of what we were thinking and she's quite the heartbreaker she's very fancy and just really beautiful and um yeah grandma that that's grandma for you and grandma used to be or maybe still i mean probably still is but mostly back in the day she used to be a um musician and singer a pretty famous one i want to say she is retired now uh, but she used to be a pretty famous one so she plays the violin she plays the piano and she sings which brings us to the teenager because the teenager she's a girl she wants to be like her grandma her grandma is her biggest example uh she wants to be a famous music mu musician i can't speak a famous musician and singer herself as well so that's what i reflected in the teenager's bedroom by placing a bunch of instruments the teenager has a huge bedroom by the way it's really big she's also very much into fashion so she has like a nice walk-in wardrobe and uh, like a clothing rack with some items on it and she is she's into fashion as well she really likes to think of her image you know her image as a musician as a um, as a singer essentially or as a famous person I feel like the fame is also what this teenager really likes about essentially at some point becoming a famous uh, singer but I also think that she's genuinely very talented and in this little area here um, the tower essentially I created this like sunroom situation and I placed the piano and I could totally see grandma and the teenager uh, making music together the teenager or the grandma probably teaching the teen how to play the piano giving her singing tips stuff like that. So I could really see that being a very wholesome relationship between the teen and the grandma. Um, so that's what I was thinking for them. And then we have two parents. We were thinking maybe the dad, we, ha we have a mom and a dad for this one. Um, maybe the dad owns like an, some sort of like an oil company because people were kind of saying that that matched with the whole like vibe of strangerville and i kind of agree so maybe like the dad has like a sketchy well not necessarily sketchy but like this oil company which like is not the greatest but he makes a lot of money from that essentially and then mom is a lawyer she probably has her own law firm and she represents all these rich and also sometimes famous people, but mostly just rich people. And uh, so that's what they do. It's a little bit like sketchy. It doesn't sound like they would necessarily be the nicest people in the world, but they are very rich. Um, so there's that. And then there's two, ch uh, two children as well. So two kids, they are twins. I'm not sure if they'd be boys or girls or a boy or a girl, it doesn't really matter. I didn't really think of their personality too much. I do feel like they're pretty spoiled children because they're twins. So it's like kind of, you know, um, they're like the twins of the family. Like it doesn't happen very often. So they're kind of spoiled. They do share a bedroom, but that's okay because they're pretty much besties. And um, it's a really big bedroom. So it basically doesn't even feel like a shared bedroom. They both have, they each have their own half of the room, like half of the space. And then they have a joined like play area with toys and stuff. But for their beds and their nightstands, they have, they each have a side of the room, which is like super far away from each other because their room is huge. Um, so yeah, they're definitely the spoiled twins of the family. And then we also have the accidental infant sibling who came along a little later and unexpectedly as well but they're there so there's an infant there as well and they're also very spoiled of course because they're the little infant they're the youngest so they're the little surprise addition to the family the little surprise baby everyone's in love with them and they're just very spoiled um they have a really cute room i really like their bedroom it's the smallest bedroom upstairs but it is one with an ensuite whereas the kids and the teen have to share a whole bathroom because they don't have en suites but the parents have en suites grandma has an ensuite and the toddler 
<laughs> has their own, or the infant, I want to say, has their own um, ensuite as well. So uh, go infant. I'm kind of jealous, can't lie. Um, so yeah, there's that. And you'll see those bedrooms obviously come together as well. But for now, we're moving on to the kitchen. So you could see me play around with the living room space. It's really big. And then we have this uh, little office space in between where I placed a cat tree. That's where we came up with the idea that these people would probably have a cat, maybe two or like three, but you can't have more than eight beings in a Sims household that goes for, uh, you can have pets and Sims, but no more than eight in total. So you can have seven cats and seven cats and one sim is a, is a household of eight, if that makes sense. Um, so uh, for the household count, essentially, we could only have one cat. So there's one cat and we uh, obviously had to do a cat tree, like a tower thing. And then we also put a um, food bowl at some point. And then I actually forgot to place a litter box at first, but I quickly placed one before I placed this lot on the gallery. So there is a, uh, a litter box, um, I think somewhere on one of the porches, I think I'm trying to remember where I placed it. I think it's outside. Yeah, I think it's outside the kitchen on the porch outside the kitchen. That's where I placed the litter box. Um, so it is there. Uh, I just kind of forgot to do it when I was doing the speed build. But here you can see the kitchen come together and the kitchen took me a hot second because the kitchen is huge, as you can probably tell. Um, so the layout for the kitchen took me a while. We played around with the idea of a bar for a little bit there as well, which I thought was a really fun idea. You can see that we have like island counters now, but at first I was trying to like merge that with like a bar and have that kind of a situation because that would make so much sense for this family to have a bar, but I just couldn't make it look good. I didn't really like how it ended up looking. So I got rid of the idea. We do not have a bar. If you wanted to have a bar, which would make sense for this house and this household. Um, you can probably place one either inside if you mess around with the floor plan a little bit or like with the layout of the kitchen. Um, or you could place one on outside, maybe like on a porch somewhere. Uh, it's definitely possible, but I just decided not to do it because I just couldn't find a place where I thought it looked good. So no bar here, but regardless, I feel like these people drink a lot of wine. They have their fancy wines and things like that. And because this kitchen is so big, I really wanted to try and make it look lived in. So especially the island counters, I feel like that's where most of the living, you know, would happen. So we have like a nice coffee corner over there with a coffee maker, but also a tea kettle with a bunch of like fresh pastries. I feel like grandma is probably very much into baking these fancy pastries. Maybe she's taking like this baking course or something where she makes all these like pastries and things. And I feel like that's something grandma would do still because she's retired, but she does like to do all these like fancy courses and stuff like that, trying to teach herself new skills. So maybe she's very much into baking. So um, there's like fresh pastries on the island counters and there's just a bunch of like, there's a waffle maker thingy as well. So um, I could really see like a cozy Sunday morning in the kitchen where there's waffles for breakfast, like like that sort of a situation. I could totally see that like play out in my, in my brain. And I thought it was so cozy. Even though, you know, I feel like these parents with their oil business and their law firm, they're like, they're not necessarily sketchy in that sense, but also they're like, I'm like, yikes, you know, like, is, is that what you want to do? Like, like that's sort of a, they're not the nicest people in that regard, but at the same time, they also have like a cozy family. So there is some cozy family living going on in this house, essentially. I'm not sure if that's making any sense, but I feel like you get the vibe of what I was trying to go for with this family. Um, and then in the kitchen, we also actually have the dining setup. So we don't have a separate dining room, but there is this like sunroom nook basically, which kind of feels like a separate room. I had it closed off in the floor plan for a little while there, but I just really liked it like opened up to the rest of the kitchen. Maybe that used to be closed off years ago, but that's like one of the renovations that they did is they opened it up to the rest of the kitchen. So it just feels like one big space, basically. 
Um, so that's what I did for the kitchen and dining. It took me a while. I, I also created a like little pantry where I placed the laundry machines and there is a dishwasher in there and there is a microwave in there. So it's kind of like not in sight, like in the kitchen, even though we have other appliances, but I just didn't really like the look of the microwave in the kitchen. So we placed that one in the little pantry where we have the laundry as well. And then we're moving on to grandma's room. Now for the bathrooms, by the way, I did not record all of the bathrooms. I think I only recorded the whole bathroom downstairs. And then the rest of them, I just did it off camera because it was so repetitive. And you know, this video is already so long that I was like, you know what, let's not, let's not include all the bathrooms. So I just did those off camera, but they're not super fancy. All of them have shower tub combos, sink, toilet, of course. So it's, it's nice. They're nice bathrooms, but they're not anything super fancy. Um, but here is grandma's room and I had so much fun with this one. The flooring in this house, like the hardwood floors that I'm using are so fancy. They really elevate the entire space or like the entire house. And I'm always really big on using rugs in my builds, but for this house, because of like the, the details in the floor and because it's already giving off so much warmth, I kept almost forgetting to place rugs in the rooms because I felt like it almost didn't really need it. Uh, but I did place a bunch of rugs, of course, because it's just cozy and I like how it looks. Um, but yeah, in grandma's room, we also have that nice rug and it's very bougie and brown. And I used the bed from the modern Lux kit, which in itself already elevates the entire space. I feel like so we used that and um, basically the bed from the modern Lux kit inspired the entire storyline for grandma. Like that bed is a vibe and that's how we came up with grandma's storyline, essentially where she is a famous or was used to be a famous musician and now she just dates a lot and um is very fancy essentially so that's that's grandma and then after the downstairs bathroom we're moving to the upstairs area what i essentially wanted to do for this house was i wanted to create a beautiful grand staircase situation with a balcony effect like with a landing looking down to the ground floor if that makes sense I really wanted to do that. I could see it for this house. I thought it would make so much sense, but because of the roofing, the annoying thing is when you create a staircase that opens up to the ground floor, all of your roofs will start clipping to the inside. If you build in the Sims a lot, if you try to like, if you create open staircases like that, you will know exactly what I'm talking about, but all your roofs will start clipping. And that was something that I could not fix for this house because of the way, like the roofing was pretty complicated. I use a lot of pieces that are definitely sticking, like that's definitely um, visible inside. You know, it's not now because everything is closed off properly, but if I were to open up the staircase area, then all those, roof pieces would start clipping on the inside and I was not able to fix the roofs to have them not do that essentially. Usually for houses, like for regular like houses or like suburban homes or just smaller houses, more simple homes, I guess, it's uh, something I'll usually be able to fix with the roofing. But for this one, because of the um, wrap around porches that I did and things, it just was not gonna work out. So we essentially, sadly do not have a grand staircase for this house, but I felt like I made, I made the most of the space anyway. And over here, by the way, we have the parents room, which is uh, green. I love this green wallpaper. I think it's so pretty. And the shape of that room is really odd because they have the tower in their room basically. And they even have a ladder going up to the tower, which we turned into a storage space and I think it turned out so cool. We basically just used a bunch of the storage items from the uh, basement kit. And then in the end, we placed a bunch of gnomes. It was so random, but I did that decorating on stream and it was just a lot of fun. And here in this tower area situation, I created this uh, reading nook with this corner couch, which actually fit in there perfectly. I did have to merge it with like into the wall a little bit to make it fit perfectly, but in the end, it works out really nice. Uh, the purple cushions on the couch didn't really work for me. So I replaced them, replaced quote unquote, them with the uh, 
pillows from the Modern Luxe kit, which worked out really nicely. And then here you can see we have the upstairs area in the tower with a ladder. Uh, and I wanted to make the space functional at first, but then I just really enjoyed the idea of making it storage because this is such an old house. They probably have a bunch of like old items that they just don't use anymore That's that have been sitting up there for years. And someone suggested this painting from vampires and I had it lean against the wall. And I picked a swatch where I was like, maybe this is like great, 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 great grandpa in this painting, you know, maybe the founder of the family or like the founder of this house that's been in the family for multiple generations for years and years and years. Um, so maybe that is like the person that actually had this house built like way back in the day, something like that. We thought that would be really cool. And then someone suggested a bunch of gnomes. So I was like, you know what? Yeah, we're going to have a bunch of gnomes in the storage. So that's what we did. Uh, and I also placed a telescope in there, which is not functional, but I like the idea of maybe, maybe at night, like opening up the, the windows and then using the telescope to look at the stars outside, which it's not possible in The Sims. You can only use the telescope when it's not undercover or inside. Uh, but I like the idea anyway, so I decided to just go ahead and place that telescope there. And then after the parents' room, we're moving on to the teen's bedroom. This one is a little bit more colorful in the sense that we have like an orange kind of wallpaper, pinky orange peach, I wanna say, wallpaper in here. And I combined it with a blue bed. We have a bunch of pastel colors going on in here. Also some brighter colors, uh, but I use a lot of high school years stuff in this room because it's a teenager. So even though their room is very grand and kind of sophisticated, I didn't want it to be too sophisticated. I still wanted it to reflect a teenager. So that's why I decided to focus on a lot of the high school years furniture to kind of give it that vibe of like a young person, um, a teenager, maybe like a sophomore in high school is kind of what I was thinking. Sophomore, maybe junior, but it's giving me sophomore vibes. I don't know why. <laughs> that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, so that's what I did. And then something that actually worked out really nicely was the fact that these high school years uh, items work really, really well in this bedroom. This furniture set that I'm using from, like I said, high school years looks very traditional and kind of old in a way. And it worked really nicely for this Victorian type house. Uh, so that was actually very lucky. So I decided to focus on that furniture set for the most part and I cluttered up their desk. I uh, The shape of this room, as you can see, is also pretty odd. They have like a built-in wardrobe and then there's like a little space next to the wardrobe that I just decided to fill up with a clothes, like a rack for clothes and stuff. Um, and yeah, they have this space. I really wanted to close off the dressing room area. So someone in chat actually suggested I should place a room divider. And I thought that was such a clever idea. This room divider that I'm using, I have never used that item before. I don't use a lot of dividers in general in The Sims. For some reason, it just doesn't come to my mind, to, like come to my brain to use them, but it worked out really, really well for this house. And this divider that I'm using, I think is from the, um, maximalist kit. I'm not sure exactly what the name of it is. This end table that I placed by the window is from that same kit. It's the, oh gosh, I'm not remembering the name of the kit. Maximalist. It's not maximalist. Decor to the max, I think is the name of that kit. Oh wow. I think that's what it is, but I'm not exactly sure. So yeah, that divider uh, saved the room and I think it just looks really, really good. And then here we have the little toddler's room. As you can see, this is definitely the smallest bedroom. It's an infant's room, not a toddler's room. I decorated it with an infant in mind. So I also placed the play mat and we have a changing table. And um, this room is just like, you know, for any infant, but I feel like it still looks really cute. And speaking of kits, by the way, I think um, there was a leak for a castle build kit, which I think is one of the community voted ones last year. Was it in around May? I think we had like a, not necessarily a survey, but they had, the Sims had the community pick between different um, themes for kits. And for the build kit, we could choose between castle stuff and I think something futuristic, but I'm not exactly remembering if that's right. And the uh, castle one actually won, and that one is coming out 
soon because it was leaked in the EA app itself, I believe. So I'm having, I'm holding out hope that there's a kit gonna be released maybe next week or the week after that, but I'm thinking maybe next week. Like they always release kits pretty fast in the sense that they announce them and then usually two days later it's there. So I'm kind of hoping that maybe they'll be announcing this castle kit next week, like on Tuesday, and we'll be getting it on Thursday. Isn't that usually how it goes? I'm not exactly sure, but I'm pretty excited about it. It's a build kit. I think I did vote for the castle one. Um, I'm not like, I don't really, ever built castles in The Sims. It's not really something I've ever done before, but it's new territory. It's kind of fun to explore. And I'm just really excited to see what this build kit is kind of is going to come with. I'm always down for a new build kit. As you know, I'm a builder, obviously, in The Sims. So I love new build, new build kits, new build stuff. So I'm very excited to see what that's going to be all about. But let me know, is that something you're excited for? Or is that something you're like, is that not your thing, maybe? And then for the... Um, create a sim kit that they had us vote on. I think it was between goth and rainbow aesthetic for like create a sim items. And I think the goth one actually won that one. I'm, I'm not exactly sure again, if I'm remembering that correctly, but I think it did. So that's pretty exciting uh, as well. I'm, I'm, ex I'm excited to see when that one's coming out. But yeah, uh, I totally talked over the kids room. You could see the shared kids bedroom, which is huge. They essentially each have one side of the room and then there is a big play area in the middle of the space. I had a bit of a tough time decorating that room because it was so big and at that point i'd been building for a while and i wasn't sure what to do with it so um it feels maybe a little bit empty but at the same time there's just a lot of space for the kids to play which i think is nice they have a bunch of toys a a uh, dollhouse a blarfy a creativity table so there are some activities there they have a desk with a journal so there's definitely a bunch of activities in that room which i feel like is nice and then I am moving on to the multiple outdoor areas that we have. We have multiple porches and little terrace areas, I guess. So for the one off of the kitchen, I decided to go for a um, an area with a grill and a nice dining table and a little bench. So that's what I did. And then here we have the space at the back of the house off of the uh, study, the uh, room between the kitchen and the living room, basically. Oh, and there is also a room off of grandma's bedroom to this porch as well, which is really nice. So I decided to just go for a seating area on the porch and then a nice fancy picnic table um, in the uh, on the terrace space here. And I also decided to place some um, planters if you want to do some uh, some activities outdoors. I tried to place a couple of different ones. So we have the flower arranging table and some planters. And then we also have the uh, monkey bars, like the jungle gym situation for children to play with here on the side of the house. And then there's this nice area at the side here or on the side where I placed a uh, another little table with chairs and a bench. I essentially just placed a whole lot of little seating areas um, around the house as well. And then here we have this small porch by the tower where I placed another chess table. We also have a chess table indoors, but I don't know, you can never have an, enough chess tables, I feel like, in a house like this. So I place one on the exterior or on the uh, porch as well. And then here we have the front door. I hadn't really placed anything there yet. So I placed some plants and again, some additional benches for some extra seating as well uh, to like fill up the space. And just there's so many cozy little romantic areas where you can just sit outside and hang out on these porches, which I feel like is so nice. Uh, and then I just placed some beautiful flowers on the outside of the build, like on the wall for like these couple areas here. And then that's essentially it. Uh, so let's jump into the game and then I will show you the house in real time. So here we have the house in the game. I think it looks very dreamy and also inviting at the same time. I don't think I've ever used this color paneling. It's almost like a light 
purple-ish color. And I think it looks really good on the exterior for this house. But yeah, as you can see, we have all these pathways leading up to multiple staircases. This is the one leading to the front door, of course. Over here, if you just follow this pathway around the house, you'll find this little porch here in the back off of the kitchen dining area. This, by the way, is where I place the litter box. So we do have a litter box. I put it here next to the door. There is a table here and a grill. And then over on this side of the house, we have another back porch with a seating area, a picnic bench and some outdoor activities here. And then around here, I think this is my favorite outdoor area here. I just really like how these pathways came out. There is an area for the kids to play here. We have some seating, a chess table. I don't know, I just think it's really cozy. Then when we go inside, I'll show you the floor plan a little bit. So over here, we have the hallway with a staircase and then off of the hallway over here, we have a small bathroom and then the living room over here, office space, kitchen, dining, and then grandma's bedroom over here. So let's take a closer look. Over here, we have the entryway space, which I kept pretty spacious. This is the first room I decorated. So I was like, let's not go too crazy so I can maybe get through this kind of fast. That did not end up happening, um, but it's still really, really nice. So over here by the staircase, we have a seating area to basically just fill up the space. I'm obsessed with this lamp from Vampires, by the way, it's so pretty. Then through through this archway, we have the living room space. I think this room turned out very cozy. These people are not very big on watching TV, as you can see, because I placed a very sad little TV next to the fireplace here. I had one above the fireplace first, but I really didn't like how it looked and I wanted a nice painting there. So that's what I did instead. But you can obviously replace it for a TV if you want to. Over here, there is a nice chess table and we have an end table behind the couch here with a bunch of games. I was thinking that these people are very much into playing games, like board games that is. So I placed a bunch of those around. And then over here we have a hobby corner with the uh, piano and also a little painting nook here. So there's definitely some activities here in the living room. Through this archway over here, we have the hallway slash mudroom slash office space, I guess. Um, there is a desk in here with a computer and a bunch of books. And then there's also a yeah, cat tree in here. And then this door leads you into the kitchen and dining. And there is a lot going on in here. I feel like this space looks very lively and there's just a lot going on. So this is the kitchen here with a nice coffee corner. We have some fresh pastries and some tea, which I think is really nice. By the window here is the sink and uh, just all your kitchen items. And then over here is the dining room space with a round dining table. I thought that fit in this space pretty nicely. There's also a high chair here for the infant, of course. And then over here is the bowl for the cat. And then through here is a very sneaky little pantry with laundry, a dishwasher and a microwave. Off of the kitchen here is grandma's room. At first I wanted to turn this into an office, but the space was so large and it had an ensuite. So I was like, you know what? Let's make an extra bedroom instead. So that's what I went with. So this is the fancy grandma's bougie bedroom. I love this bed in here. It's so nice. She has her reading nook here and also a violin and a couple of wardrobes here. And she is also into knitting, of course. And then over here is her vanity with her multiple flowers that she got from multiple dates. In here is a nice ensuite bathroom, which is nothing too fancy, but it is cozy. And then of course, over here is the uh, downstairs hall bathroom, which is also nothing too special, but it's nice and spacious. Then upstairs, this is where the floor plan gets a little bit messy, I feel, but it makes sense though. So we have the landing over here, which again is nothing special, just a hallway. And there is a hall bathroom over here. Layout wise, it is pretty much identical to the one downstairs. Then over on this side is the parents' bedroom, which is nice and colorful. We have some green wallpaper and a lot of blue going on as well. It's pretty fancy. They have some really tall bookcases, like some built-in bookcases here, a large built-in wardrobe, and then this tower area, which I think turned out really fun. 
fun. This is basically their cute little cozy reading nook with a corner couch and a coffee table. And then they have a sneaky ladder going up to the tower where we have the storage. All the storage, all these old items and these gnomes as well. And the uh, portrait of the family founder essentially is up here as well. And then the parents have, of course, an ensuite as well. Then on this side is the teen's room. Very lucky teenager. This room is huge. I love how this one's cluttered up, uh, especially this nook. I feel like this is my favorite nook of this room with the desk and all the clutter. Also some extra clutter in the corner, their bed and this nice little shelving unit over here. It's just very colorful in here and I really enjoy that. They are an aspiring musician. As you can see, they have all their instruments here. And then behind this divider here is the uh, dressing room space, I guess you could almost call it. It's a little messy and there's some additional clothes over here and some more knickknacks. So this teenager uh, has a really nice bed room. Across from the teenager's room is the infant's room, which is also very colorful. I'm loving this purple wallpaper in here. I feel like that is just so cute. They have a bunch of stuffed animals in here. Of course, the uh, little play mat, some toys and a bookcase. Also some built-in storage here and the infant gets their own bathroom. So they have a nice ensuite, which they don't need it yet, but at some point they will. I mean, the infant probably gets their baths in here as well. So that's very convenient. And then over here, last but not least, is the shared kids room, which again also is huge. So they each get their own side of the room. Basically, there is a little space over here with some toys, a desk. They have a built in wardrobe as well. And then the other bed is over here on the other side of the room. And they have a nice play area here in the middle of the space. But that is essentially it for this build. So this Victorian dream home is up on the gallery. It uses a bunch of packs and as you can see, it's very expensive. It comes in at just under 250,000 simoleons. That's quite the investment, but it does make sense. It is kind of what I had in mind for this grand Victorian home, so it makes sense. It has five bedrooms and five bathrooms, and I built it on a 40 by 30 in the world of Strangerville. So if you want to place it in your game, then that is where it goes. But that's going to do it for today's video. So I really hope that you enjoyed this one. You can obviously go ahead and download it off the gallery. Like I just showed you, my username on the gallery is Simmery Sims. You can also follow me on Instagram, Threats, and on TikTok if you like. My username on there is Simmery Sims as well. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, feel free to do so. And if you want to be notified of every single time I upload a video, just click that little bell icon and you should be fine. I also live stream over on Twitch a few times a week. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and give me a follow over on twitch.tv forward slash Simmery Sims. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.